Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I um, have been a little MIA. Um, I wanted to do a seven month, well it would have been, I think the last one I did was a seven and a half month, so it was only been about a month ago um, that I did a video on, you know, just a lot about where I'm at. Um, I try not to focus on those videos so much. I'm not saying, you know, they're not important and that you guys don't want to um, see them, but I feel like, and maybe you can leave comments below to let me know if me doing more videos on topics rather than eight months, a year off, etc., cetera, um, that would be good too, because I'm trying to do in videos that are a little more informative that can maybe help somebody. So the biggest thing I wanted to talk about today um, that I've been experiencing horribly these last, I want to say probably four months is histamine. Like I did not know what anybody in group a year and eight months ago was talking about with histamine. When they had mentioned comments like I'm on fire, I can't eat, I'm sick. My stomach's upset. I feel dizzy. I feel hot. I feel sweaty. I feel clammy, cold, like, like Arctic. I describe it as Arctic, you know, cold behind me. Um, I didn't know. And anybody can argue if they want. This is just, again, this whole channel is based on, I'm not a doctor. And let me just put this out there before I start. I'm not a doctor. You know, my information is merely opinion based. It's merely my opinion, my, you know, what, what I've gone through, um, through my journey in, in a year and eight months, well, really five years. But, um, so anything I say is not to be, you know, don't run out and do this, that, the other thing you have to make your own decisions, um, and do what you feel you need to do. So let's just put that out there real quick. Um, so yeah, so, you know, I would see people all the time in group just, you know, saying they were on fire and they were burning and they were just itching and scratching and all this crazy stuff. Well, I got my dose in these past three, like I said, probably th four months. Um, and as I'm itching now, I apologize, guys. I have a huge, huge histamine flare up. It's, it's, all I can explain it is it feels like having a sinus infection, rolling around in poison ivy, um, and hay fever. So if you can imagine all of those things, that's how I'm feeling right now. Um, you know, from up here, it's, it's, it's just crazy. So basically the word histamine, and I am going to read what I, you know, these aren't my words, but I'm going to read what the internet claims histamine to be. And I'm going to break it down a little bit more layman terms because some of the stuff I don't quite, you know, understand when it's, when it's that. So histamine is an organic nitro... I might butcher this, nitrogenous compound involved in local immune response. So when I read that, the first thing I think of is histamine isn't just when we think of I'm sneezing, allergies, it's your immune system. Makes total sense why we feel like trash during benzo and off benzos. It also regulates, um, I, I'm sorry guys, I'm really not able to read today. Physiological, again, I butchered it, function in the gut. Okay, so it's two things. That's your immune system and your gut, which both affect us going through benzo. Like I seriously, when this window opened for me, my eyes got huge. Like I'm not kidding. Because again, some will disagree with me and say, oh, it's not all histamine, Melissa. Well, you know what? For me, I, I know who I am, what I feel, what allergies I've ever had, which were none, even growing up. Um, eight months ago, you know, under eight months ago, I was eating everything I wanted to eat. You don't just come down with things for no reason. So, and again, these weren't something that I had before Benzo. So just put that out there too. Um, so it's a function in the gut and acts as a neurotransmitter, which we all know and have heard of neurotransmitters a lot in Benzo because that's what's affected while we're going through this. Um, the other thing is... It says as part of an immune response to foreign pathogens, 
Histamine is produced by basophils and the mast cells found in nearby connective tissues. So again, I'm going to kind of explain it how I think. You can list down below if you think I'm a crazy woman or if I'm saying it wrong, please, you know, correct me. But this is kind of my take on it. So we've got a mast cell in the body that is responsible for literally us living, like for real. Like histamine and mast cell are not just what people think. And I think this is where we get confused. It is the whole body. It's your whole being. It's your gut health. It's your breathing, your respiration, your sinuses, your allergies, your pH in your stomach, you know, your 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 bacterias, your healthy floras, all that stuff in your body is all a part of mast cell, of how mast cell breaks things down. So this is what histamine does. It's a chemical found in the body cells causing many other symptoms such as allergies, runny nose or sneezing, when a person is allergic to a substance, food, or dust. So it could be any of those things. It could even be environmental outside. And that's part of what I'm having right now that I've never had in my life. When a person is allergic to a particular substance such as food, dust, or or a, yeah, a substance, I'm sorry, such as food or dust, the immune system by accident thinks that it's foreign, like, because you're having a reaction and it starts attacking everything and making things below out of proportion. So you end up with headaches, migraines, nasal congestion, sinus issues, fatigue, hives, which I'm suffering with right now, digestive issues, irregular for women, menstrual cycles, vomiting, nausea, irregular heartbeat. And I can't tell you how many more there are. There's like flushing, um, rapid heart rate, um, feeling like you're going to pass out, all kinds of crazy stuff just with histamine. So to me, 90% of my symptoms are those, are histamine. And it makes sense because think, every single day you're eating, you eat two to three meals a day and snack in between. Your body is going to go insane. And what I've been reading is Valium, which they don't say Ativan, Clonopin, dies, or Clonopin, Ativan, Ativan, Xanax, and all the others, Clonzepam, yet, but they do say that Valium blocks, and the big word is D-A-O, and if I'm saying it right, let me pull it up because I don't want to butcher this, but D-A-O, I always get it, I was actually watching a really good YouTube um, video, Dr. Gachi, I will leave it below, he is an amazing doctor and knows more than most about prescription drugs, but D-A-O, I'll, I'll explain what it is, so basically, uh, let me go back, Okay, I apologize, guys. My brain is really, I'm tired. Okay, so let me go in and type it in. Okay, so it's a DAO enzyme, and basically what it is, it's called di, diamine, diamine, I don't know if it's diamine or diamine, and it's oxidase. And what it basically is, is it's in our body. So say you sit down with your family and a huge histamine, um, let's use um, tomatoes as an example. Tomatoes are huge histamine releasers, meaning when you eat them, if you're going to eat anything, that would make you scratch and everything if you're allergic, normal. The normal person. I'm sorry, guys. I'm going through horrible air hunger too today. So say you sit down with your family and you're eating tomatoes. DAO basically will block the histamine from building in your blood stream and it erupting like a volcano. But when you're on medicines, and there are a lot, and I really wish I would have um, saved the list and I might have saved it. There's a list of just even antidepressants, benzos. There's a huge list I found that, that actually block DAO. You would think that sounds good that it does. It's not. DAO actually breaks down histamine that we're eating every day and it's getting rid of it. It's getting rid of it out of the body. Your body makes histamine in your hypothymus. That makes sense why our body temperatures through benzo goes up and down. My body temperature in the winter, no joke. I had such a hard time getting warm. My body temperature at one point was 94 degrees. Like I was freaking out. I'm not kidding. And there's been times where it's gone to 99. And I really thought, like not kidding, that it was... Menopause, no. When I go through menopause, for me, 
my menopause is where I'll actually sweat and soak in the back of my neck and in between my chest. I haven't actually sweated since being on and off benzos this whole time. So I know it's not, it's not female. The other thing is it's done through your kidneys. That makes sense why a lot of us women, I don't know about you men, but I noticed with me coming on, going on and coming off benzos and being off of them, there's some times where I'm not being like TMI y'all, but I can feel burning in my bladder, whether I go or not, I can feel burning, like inflammation in my bladder but I got checked like, what, a week? Two weeks ago, zero infections. Like literally no infection going on. I'm like, what the hell? Seriously, like I went into my doctor. I even bought the AZO, which is like a cranberry supplement just to like prevent it from spreading. And my doctor's like, Melissa, you don't have a UTI. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> because I could kid you not, I've had a lot of them during withdrawal and they tested positive. I didn't with this one. This is merely histamine. So your hypothymus, which controls body temperature, things in that nature, um, and your central nervous system, then you've got your kidneys. And then I did read, which I don't know if it's true, I haven't done enough research, but I read your, your gut lining. And I also read, um, what was the other one? There was the hypothymus, the kidneys, the gut lining. Oh, and for some, I've seen uterus. Also in a woman's uterus. So bingo, no wonder why we feel so terrible. You know what I mean? Like this to me is all connecting. So I'm just going to read some of their, um, I'm on medical news today, and this is just some of their histamine intolerance symptoms. And tell me if these do not sound mimicking to the benzo withdrawal that we go through. Diarrhea, chronic headaches. I can't tell y'all now when I eat something with high in histamine, no joke, about 10 minutes later, much like my MSG attacks, which those are gone, thank God, I will get such a bad headache to where it feels like my head is going to literally explode like any minute. Like I sit here waiting for it just to seriously pop. Like I'm not kidding, it's that bad and it's that quickly. So chronic headaches, flushing, especially in the head and the chest. Irritable bowel syndrome, half of people on benzos have that. And IBS, not to be funny, isn't even really a diagnosis. It's clinically diagnosed by symptoms. And I know that I don't have IBS because it went away. Like it literally went away. So um, congestion, runny nose, itchy nose. I am so, and I figured this out. I, I don't know if I remember, it's been so long telling y'all that I literally lost my taste of smell and in, in, in um, taste of smell. Oh my God, listen to me. So sorry that I literally lost my sense of smell in my taste. My taste is depleted and my smell is like no more. So after I clean the house and it's all nice and clean and I walk in and out of the house, that's about the only time that I can smell that my house is clean. If I like candles, even strong ones, where my husband's like, oh my God, that's like too strong, I don't smell it. When I make food, which I'm not a bad cook, I like am adding things because I literally cannot taste anything. So I know that these issues, and this has been going on for a year and eight months, like no joke. Since I started my taper, it started, and so didn't the sinus infections that wouldn't go away. In my ears, nose, and throat, doctor said, Melissa, there's nothing there. So I know this is all histamine. The other one, so congested, runny, or itchy nose, which I have 24 hours a day. The minute that I go to eat foods, I'm back to being congested, and I sound like this. Um, red, itchy, or watery eyes all the time. My contacts even bother me. If I don't open a brand new pair of contacts in brand new saline solution, I'm not kidding. This has never happened to me. Mine are throwaways, but I can get like two days use out of them. When I go to take them out of where they're sitting and put them in my eyeballs, my eyes burn horribly. Um, even to perfumes, body washes, shampoos, anything that runs down my body, in my scalp, itch, itch, itch. I mean, it's just unbearable. My stomach, I did some yard work with my family the weekend outside. And the minute that I came in, my whole stomach was caught out in hives. Even where my derma glue is for my hernia repair, I'm actually allergic to the glue. Do you know that my stomach is red behind the derma glue? Now, mind y'all, I just had total gallbladder removal with those, with that derma glue, 
back in, what was it, September? Never had a breakout, never had a rash. Now that I'm off Benzo and they did the Dermaglue over the one spot, I kid you not, it's horrible. It is horrible. Um, sneezing. Um, I know this sounds really weird, but every time I chew gum, never had this done before until I got on and off benzos. Like if it's peppermint, especially, it's kind of like getting pepper up your nose. I'll actually sneeze 18 times. I can't chew gum. It makes me sneeze unbearable and I'm not allergic to gum. Um, shortness of breath, definitely have it. Um, hives are red rays, itchy, red burning bumps. I just mentioned that. I get it all the time now. Um, explained anxiety. Believe it or not, I feel like 50% of our anxiety is from coming off the benzo due to histamine related and not because we actually have anxiety. My anxiety is way better than it was when I was in tolerance, but I still have some anxiety and I feel it worse when things rev me up and even if I'm not thinking about something. So that, that to me is key. Stomach cramps or pain, get it all the time. Um, chronic constipation, it's been back and forth with me. Nausea and vomiting, not so much the vomiting, but nausea, depending on what I eat. Um, gas or bloating, yes. Unexplained exhaustion, yes. Dizziness, very dry, patchy, scaly skin, eczema. I don't know if I remember telling you guys this story, but I actually, um, I use vegan in, in animal cruelty-free makeup, and I like my eyeshadows. I like to put them on when I go out with my husband. I like to feel good about myself every now and then. Well, the days that I do, I ended up going to my doctor because this eye right here and this eye over here had really scaly, like, spots. Now, I never had this before. I had eczema right here with my son under one eye. It was really weird. It was one little spot. But this was both of my eyelids. They were scaly like an alligator. So she gave me some, some creams, and I thought it went away. I never connected it. So it went away. I started wearing makeup again. And I even bought a brand new palette. So I thought maybe, you know, it's old makeup. I don't know. I mean, I don't pay attention to the months I buy my makeup. I'm pretty bad about that, really. So I got looking when I got into histamine and I was like, okay, so what's going on here? My eyeshadows have a cocoa base that makes them go on. If you're a woman, that makes them go on really nice and they don't look like, you know, we're in the 80s, <laughs> like a clown. But I didn't know this, chocolate and cocoa are high in histamine, seriously high in histamine. Even some of my mascaras have cocoa base in them. I can't use them, my eyes will itch. So, and guess what? The same thing happens to me when I eat chocolate. The other night I had chocolate, this whole section, and you guys can't see it, I have bumps raised right here, all in the back, and all on this side, all histamine related. Strawberries, tomatoes, chocolate, pure high in histamine. Avocados, all that stuff. A lot of us don't know this. So I, I can't wear those eyeshadows. I'm gonna either have to wait, because I love that, that makeup brand. So I'm gonna have to wait, or I'm gonna have to switch to something that's not a cocoa base, which is hard to find today, because a lot of vegan stuff is going more like, you know, natural things that we can use and implement them into our makeups without getting rashes. But somebody who has histamine, can't use chocolate or eat it. So the other thing is unexplained exhaustion, dizzy, dizziness. We read that. Sorry, guys. And then eczema, irregular or increased heart rate, severe menstrual, menstrual pain. I do get that, which is weird. I shouldn't because I don't have a uterus anymore. Um, low blood pressure, sleep problems, swelling around the lips, eyes, and occasionally throat. I do believe in benzo. And I don't know if you guys remember, but maybe I can put a picture if I remember to edit this video. Sometimes I don't. I just raw it and just put it together. Um, but my whole face, when I was going through withdrawal, like my eyes were so puffy. When I'd wear my glasses, you could see a line all sitting right here on my face because my face was huge when I was coming off of benzos. I believe that's what causes the puffiness. It's not just the benzo. It's the histamine issues from benzos. The other thing is tremors, which that could all be related to, um, if I'm saying this right, acascasia. A lot of people have the internal shaking, the, out, the outer shaking. Some you can see. I've had the shaking inside where you can't see it. Um, let's see what else they have listed. Okay, so even foods, foods and drinks. So the biggest things, and this is probably why I'm thinking 
alcohol is not a good idea. And I don't know, I could be wrong, but I think this is why being off alcohol is so bad for us. I don't believe it's because it's just that the benzo is still in the fat cells. So according to the current research, everyday foods and drinks are rich in histamine. And these are the foods and drinks. Alcohol, number one. Aged cheeses, a lot of us have problems with those that rub us up. Canned, pickled, and fermented foods. Smoked products such as sausage, ham, bacon, and salami, I'm having an issue with all of them. And I've always been able to eat, I don't eat a lot, but I've always been able to eat like, you know, sausage, um, peppers, and mushrooms on like a hoagie roll, can't have that anymore. Um, bacon is kind of setting me off. Um, vinegar is a no-go for me. I actually had some the other day and something I was, oh, I somebody had mixed it in coleslaw, which I normally don't do, but I got it at a restaurant and um, it was really, like it was really bad. It was like too much vinegar. And when I took, sorry guys, I have a little itch and I don't wanna, I'm moving my hair so I'm not scratching at myself. I'm trying to distract a little. So I apologize if it's annoying anybody, but so yeah, so just a little bit of that vinegar, like that literally set me off. Um, prepared meals, frozen meals, frozen TV dinners, pizzas, things like that. Yogurt, which sucks because I love my smoothies for vitamin C to boost my immunity. But again, I can't cut all these things out and, and I'm not ready to. I've just cut out the big guys. Um, salty snack foods, sweet with pr pr preservatives, chocolate and cocoa, that's keyword. Green teas, most citrus fruits, pineapple, canned fish such as mackerel and tuna, which I love tuna. Peanuts, spinach, tomatoes, bananas, eggplant, strawberries, cherries, chili powder, cinnamon, and cloves. Now there's the other thing. And as my friend says, here's the kicker. Hey Deb, if you're watching. Um, you also have foods out there that are inhibitors. So believe it or not, they don't cause histamine. They don't over, like over put histamine in the body. But what they do is they exaggerate the histamine already in the body. So you've got two whammies against you. High histamine foods and foods that cause the histamine you already have to go crazy. Isn't this fun going through benzo withdrawal, isn't it? Now I see why. And again, people can disagree with me all they want. I know that these are the reasons why I am sick. I am no longer having benzo withdrawal, meaning like needing the Ativan, feeling that heaviness on the chest. Um, most of my symptoms are honestly confined to cognitive issues, such as memory, my moods, feeling joy, feeling sad. I feel a lot of anger. And let me think, what else? And mild anxiety, but mostly cognitive issues. I feel like if I go to grab something like the remote, it takes me a minute to kind of sit and think, okay, which button do I need to push? Where normally I'd be like this. My, my brain in what I'm doing is, is, is not connecting. So that I know is benzo, 100%. Um, but these things, I'm sorry, I beg to differ. I know our histamine intolerance. Like those are crazy symptoms. It almost, I would say at least 90% in the groups I've been in have every one of those. So I, in my opinion, believe that's what this is for me. Because again, everything else is going back to normal. Like seriously, um, my sleep's a little iffy, but I believe that could be histamine related. Um, I am on a low histamine probiotic now. I got off the line and I'm on a new one. I don't feel like I'm having a bad adverse reaction to it. I am on D3 liquid. Um, I feel like not only do I not wanna put things through my gut with it being so bad, um, I don't have a gallbladder. So digesting vitamin D3 and K2, for me, go through my bloodstream, actually it's quicker and it gives my liver a break. Um, I am, I did just start vitamin C spray. Um, I will tell you that I've read that zinc, vitamin C and magnesium. Again, I'm not telling you to go take these. Please do your research. I'm not a doctor, um, but they do break down the, um, they do break down and help the DAO break down your histamine. So you're not having, what I think is happening is certain days that I'm eating these things, I'm okay. Sorry guys, um, my camera's shaking, but I believe we're okay. But I believe in increments. 
Because what I believe is happening is this. If I'm eating a bunch of crappy foods, not saying crappy, but I'm saying foods that just everyday foods that I would normally eat because I love them, like tomatoes, strawberries, things of that nature, you have like, you know, a pipe, like say here's a pipe, your histamine is just going. And then what happens once you have so much, it explodes and we have what's called these flare ups. The other thing that I wanted to mention that people don't know about histamine is histamine is responsible for your immune system and your anti-inflammatory in your body. So many of us are being diagnosed with like one of my good friends, fibromyalgia. How much of it is fibromyalgia if you didn't have it before this? Like that's what I'm thinking. When I went out and mowed the lawn last year and came in and felt so good for the day, but then when I woke up the next day, I felt like I had died. I don't believe that it's just the, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't believe it's just me using those muscles that I didn't have before. I believe it's because allergies, pollens outside, things like that are going through my bloodstream and they're making me sick. My joints were aching. It literally is responsible for everything. So it's not just sinuses, allergies, sneezing, your gut, your heart, your anxiety, it's your immunity. It's literally your inflammatory system in your whole body from head to toe. No wonder why we feel so shitty. I mean, really think about this. I'm going to leave you guys some information below just from some sites that I've been studying. Um, I'm also going to leave below. There's a really good video. It's kind of cartoony. Um, I did post it in group the other day because I feel like sometimes the layman term videos make us, you know, because I'm not a doctor. I don't understand a lot of this stuff. But um, the video just talks about histamine the way we understand it. So we understand more of what we're going through. But honestly, you guys, I didn't break out with rashes. I mean, and of course, I don't want to show you guys, but I'm just saying like right now behind my neck, I've got welts. That's why I said I'm not trying to, I know somebody had yelled at me in one of my videos about playing with my hair. I'm really not. Like I just, I'm dealing with some histamine and I don't want to be, if I do this, I'm just, I'm not scratching because I know scratching makes it worse. Now, the other side of this is people will say, okay, well, Melissa, why can't you take it in histamine? The problem is with histamine, we have and I don't even remember, let me just double check myself, but I do believe it's like H1 through H4. Certain antihistamines work for only certain histamines in the body. So if you take Benadryl, Benadryl may get rid of the scratching, itching, and runny eyes. It's not going to stop the gut stuff, the heart racing, the anxiety, and all that stuff. That's why I'm going to try as a test to see how magnesium, zinc, and vitamin C drops work. Because if they keep it down, i much rather be on that. And to be honest, I can't take Benadryl. I tried the pills the other day and I ended up with, sorry TMI, diarrhea. And I did do some Googling and Benadryl is fat soluble. So because I don't have a gallbladder, it didn't agree with me. Then I tried the liquid Benadryl the next day. And guess what? I felt like such a zombie. And I do believe it's due to benzos. I just, I couldn't even function. I can't live like that. So next best thing, try supplements. And I've already, what I suggest to you guys is this. Don't go in jumping into eight supplements at one time, two supplements at one time. I've learned this the hard way. We're not going to know what one we react to if we take two or three. We are not going to know which one is the culprit if we take two or three. So what I did was started my D, fine on it, been on it three months, no bad reactions. Went ahead on my new probiotic. It's all organic. It's all like non-GMO, no coin, corn, no soy, no, no, none of that stuff. Have had no issues being on it for like a week or so. Then um, the next thing is vitamin C I started yesterday. Now vitamin C are just spray. It's just a spray. It's like you drinking orange juice, but I can't have orange juice due to the histamine. So this is another way to boost my immune system and on top of get myself some vitamin C. Vitamin C I read is great because you can't OD on it. Like, I don't mean OD, but like over supplement on it because the fact is it's actually out of your system in 24 hours. So that's good news. But again, guys, if you're going to use things, use them precautiously, start little by little. That way, if you go like, I actually bought some vitamin C gummies. Here's an example. Um, elderberry, because elderberry is amazing. Well, the same day, 
I drank a boost. I've been drinking boost for protein, the vanilla shakes, because I'm on a weight gain. Um, and I got really sick stomach, like not TMI, but I was on the toilet all day. So I didn't know what was it was the boost. There's tons of vitamins in the boost, right? Or was it the gummy, the vitamin C elderberry gummy? Well, guess what? The day after I did just the boost and no gummy, I had no diarrhea. I can't do the gummies. They're just, and I don't think it's too much vitamin C. I think whatever artificial sugars in there, not having a gallbladder just did not settle my tummy. So that's kind of what I'm saying is like, we need to take supplements, but take them in increments. So if one is bothering you, you can remove it. And then be like, okay, let's try something different with already knowing what you're on is safe to take. That That's kind of what I'm learning. So like I'm saying, guys, I'm not being Miss Know-It-All. I'm not a doctor. But what I've come to find with histamine in the way that I've been feeling and every symptom that I have, I've joined a histamine group to cross-reference. All of their symptoms are mine, except I wasn't born with like mast cell issues or some people who deal with poor allergies who have like all the you know, in, in, where they do them on the back and see which, no, like I've never in my life. And again, I didn't have this even before Benzo. So it's frustrating because I'm not only trying to put on weight, I lost 19 pounds coming off Benzos. Like I'm trying to regain and reclaim my life. And how am I supposed to do that if I can't eat? And I'm not going to starve myself. So I've come to the conclusion I'm just getting rid of the high in histamine stuff, like the stuff that I know, strawberries, tomatoes. I mean, I had tacos like two weeks ago and I literally was in a wave for like, I'm not kidding you, a couple of weeks. I believe this is where the benzo waves are coming from. Um, and again, people can disagree to agree, agree to disagree with me. I'm sorry, but for me, I know how I feel. And when I tried it out and I've actually, you know, done the, the, the actual experiment to know that this is what it is, this is what it is. That's all there is to it for me. So I wanted to share that. Um, again, I'm eight months off for those of you who just, you know, kind of joined my channel. I probably should have said this at the beginning, but I was on only 0.5 milligrams of Ativan for four years. I went into tolerance after I'm actually coming to do my studying. I've actually went into tolerance sooner than 11 months that I had thought. It probably was in like three to four months after taking it because it was such a low dose. So I tapered for a year and I've been off for eight months as of just a few days ago. And, you know, I make videos to help people. You know, I don't know it all. I'm learning as I go. I'm listening to professionals that have been in the industry, you know, way longer than me. People have, who have, have gone through benzos way longer than me. This is how we learn. This is how we help one another. And my thing is, please join a support group. And I say this all the time in my videos, even if you, you know, you don't feel like you may need it all the time. Limit yourself while going in them though too, because they can be triggering. Everybody is so damn sick. Everybody needs support right now. So, you know, just join a support group, even if it's not mine. But mine is on Facebook, The Benzo House. Um, you know, you can find us. I'll accept you. Just answer the few questions that I ask in the beginning. We have no drama. We don't tolerate it. Um, I don't allow people to bully each other. I will boot you out in a minute. I don't want my group for that purpose. When we're focusing on the drama, we're not focusing on healing. We're not focusing on one another. So like I said, guys, I did want to just talk about histamine a little bit. I'm still learning as I go, but I do know that it affects more than just sneezing and itching and, and scratching. Um, it, it is actually our whole makeup of our body. And because benzos deplete so much stuff from us, I mean, look, my vitamin D was down. They did an antidiuretic hormone in my brain. When you drink water and retain it to stay hydrated, my antidiuretic in my brain was coming back low. Do you know my doctor just recently checked it and it's back to normal? My urine is back to a pale yellow. It's no longer clear anymore. This drug does so much. Whether it's permanent or not, nobody, nobody should have to go through this. Nobody. This is an inhumane way to live. When your body is a torture chamber, seven days a week, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. So whoever thinks that it's a great idea to give a benzo, think again. And the other thing is, 
They're not for long-term use. We all know this already. Why are you handing out a, lo a long-term, a short-term use pill for, for something that may take six or eight months to resolve, such as depression and anxiety? It, it's years of treatment and therapy. I, I don't get it. But honestly, guys, my next video, um, I'm working on doing um, why I don't believe in medication and or prescriptions, if you will. Um, I know I'm going to get a lot of hate for it, but it is my next video. And like I said, guys, love each other. Stay strong. Don't give up. Know that these symptoms and in, in, in things you're going through are temporary. They cannot hurt you. I'm living proof. They are not comfortable at times. They are scary at times. But please join a support group. Know that this stuff is temporary and it gets better and better. You need to have the support behind you. So again, guys, like I said, thank you for watching my video and I will see you in my next one. Bye.